Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. It's Saturday morning here in Thailand. Um, I'm going to go through the S&P and the NASDAQ. There are some really good trading opportunities at the moment. Now we're seeing some volatility, which I did predict if you're a follower of my report, I've been predicting some increased volatility for a couple of weeks. That seems to be playing out. The markets have been heading lower, which is as expected. I'm going to show you why. So here we are on the e-mini S&P contract. Now, if you watched my video last week, or if you've been following me as a subscriber, or even reading the free reports that I put out in my free Telegram group, you will know that I've been expecting the stock markets to head lower recently. The initial warning signs were the bearish engulfing candles, which you don't see often in the US stock markets, because of course, they've been rising. So when I started to see this, I thought this needs paying attention to. We had this large bearish engulfing candle on the 4th of April. We had another one here on the 10th of April. This one here, not quite a bearish engulfing candle, but still a big red bodied candle, which is relatively rare in the US stock markets, because as I say, we're usually in bull trends. So this really was the warning sign to me. We broke my trend line here going back to the beginning of February. That was another warning sign. The market dipped, returned to retest that trend line and then failed. So that was a good sell opportunity. We broke through what was a good support level initially. The long worked on the first test. We broke, we switched into short positions. Once we'd broken the um, Fibonacci confluence area of around 5150 and the 50 day moving average, the black line, that told me we were going to sink. We got down to the next target around the 50, 50, 50, 40 support area. We did get a little bit of a bounce to take profit on as we hit the 50, 80 and the 50, 90 target. So that worked quite well. Now, yesterday when I woke up, the news headlines were telling us about retaliation from Israel in the Middle East on Iran, a very minor attack. Uh, initially, the stock markets plunged. Look how beautifully we hit my target around 49.60 on the downside. Once we'd broken that support level, um, I had a sell on a break below 50.30 and we did hit the targets down around the 49.60 area. Let me just check where I had that. There you go. I had it on my trade sheet. Sell a break below 50.30. My targets were 5,049.70. So that absolutely worked perfectly. Even if you were asleep and you had a sell stop to enter order at 50.30 with a target of 49.70, you would have woke up to a nice 600 point profit. We bounced off the 49.70 area and returned to the resistance around 50, 40, 50, 50. If you are a subscriber, then you would have received that notification from me suggesting a short position around lunchtime in the UK, talking about 50, 40 to 50, 50 being a good sell opportunity. That did actually turn out to be the exact high of that move. Let me show you. So we reached a peak of 50, 58, which was a really good sell opportunity. Fairly obvious, actually. You could see it on the daily chart there that I just showed you. This is the hourly chart, Fib level 50, 50, the 50 hour moving average. And we had the trend line going back about three days. It was a good enough reason selling into the short term bear trend. We got oversold on the hourly stochastic. We got overbought on the hourly stochastic. It, all of that, including the levels on the daily chart, suggested to me that we should be getting into a short position. I couldn't actually believe the stock markets bounced back that much and presented such a great opportunity. By the time you went to bed, we were back around the 5,000 area. So a nice 40, 50 point profit on top if you were trading the S&P and following my signals on Telegram. I don't think this level is going to hold for long. I think we're building momentum to the downside. I don't think that the tension in the Middle East is the main driver of this move downwards. But we've also got the Federal Reserve less likely to cut rates this year now. The economy appears to be pretty strong. I think we've got further moves to the downside. Now, if we do break below 49.60, 49.50 area, that means we've broken the 100-day moving average. Now, that isn't something that we should be taking lightly. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see us go down to 48.70, 48.50. The only thing that would change that for me is if we managed to beat yesterday's high at 50.58 which of course was my sell level, and I would be selling there again. I'm actually already short there, of course, and I'm running the short positions because I do think we're going to probably drop 100 points. Yesterday, when I gave that call, I suggested a 10 to 15 point stop loss. So risk versus reward wise, that worked. We're looking at a 40 or 50 point profit versus a 10 to 15 point loss. That's a good three to one, maybe even four to one risk reward. No one's going to complain about that. And if you're still running short positions over the weekend, hopefully we'll see a little bit more profit out of that trade at the beginning of next week. 
Okay, this is the NASDAQ which broke the uptrend going back to December. Again, we had some bearish engulfing candles, some warning signs there. So I did warn you that the stock markets were likely to head lower. We broke the trend line. We broke the 50-day moving average. We broke the first support level, which was around 18,050 down to 18,000. That had worked many times before we broke. So it was a good level. But when we broke, I had a switching into short positions for a target of around 17,630, 17,5,70. We broke below the 100-day moving average. We tumbled as far as 17,113. Let me show you the short-term chart. Again, really nice sell opportunity on the bounce yesterday. I was surprised we bounced so far, but I just sat back and waited and hoped that we would hit my sell level. And indeed we did. As you can see here, I said 17,500 to 17,600 could be a good sell opportunity in the E-mini NASDAQ. Shorts need 100 tick stop loss, very low risk, 100 ticks. We reversed bang in the middle of that, 17,553. Couldn't really have been more accurate. We dropped just below 17,200, a good 350 points. Really nice profit by the close. We'd got overbought on the stochastic. We'd hit some a fib level. We were just about to touch the 50 hour moving average. It was pretty obvious that we should reverse from that point. We now close well below the 100 day moving average. We've closed at the low of the day. We've closed at the low of the week. I should probably have a look at the weekly chart. A big red bodied candle on the weekly chart. We're not hitting any particular support level. I would be very surprised if we don't see further losses next week. Next target would be around 16,970 down to 16,870. I don't think I'd be buying it there. I really think that we could be going down as far as the 16,500, 16,400 area in the NASDAQ. We are getting oversold on the daily chart, but we're not oversold enough for me to want to get into long positions just yet. Take note of this. This is really interesting. When markets are in bull trends, they don't spend much time in oversold territory. Have a look at this. So you can see the spikes down to oversold territory, they don't last long before they reverse very quickly on the slow stochastic. Sometimes they don't even get into oversold territory and then the market reverses. Now, we spend a lot longer in overbought territory because, of course, just because you're overbought in a bull trend doesn't mean you're about to reverse. So this is a very typical pattern of a market in a bull trend, looking at the slow stochastic, spending more time in the, in the overbought area, spending very little time in the oversold area, often not even reaching the oversold area. If we are entering a bear market, you will start to see the reverse of that on your slow stochastic. You will start to see the market spending longer periods of time in the oversold area at the bottom and less time in the overbought area at the top. So that alone is, an, is a good indication of where we are trending without even looking at the price action. So it will be interesting to see how deep we get into oversold territory now on this move no, lower in the NASDAQ and how long we spend in there. And then on the bounce, it'll be interesting to see whether we actually get into overbought territory or, or whether we reverse before we get there. This is interesting because the last peak on the 11th of April was barely over the halfway point in the slow stochastic before we reversed. Is that telling us that this is not just a short term correction that will last a few days? Who knows, but it's just something I really wanted to point out to you. Okay, I hope you found that video useful. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. I've got details of how to join my free Telegram group, sign up for my five-day challenge, or if you want to jump into a subscription and start making money following my signals, then I'll put a link in there as well.